guys, welcome to another workshop by Boxing Science. My name is Danny Wilson, I'm the co-founder and strength and conditioning coach. This workshop is on the advanced strength series and it's all about accommodating resistance. So accommodating resistance training is a very popular strength and conditioning method across all different sports. And it's where we use bands or chains to increase the tension towards the top of the lift. This can improve strength, speed, and mainly acceleration because the tension is getting increased as we go through the lift. An athlete has to keep producing force all the way through the movement. Now you might have seen this on like YouTube or Instagram. You might think that's a cool method, but not too confident on applying that into your training environment. Or you might be might have used it, but might struggle with using the setup, band selection. Um, what kind of weight load to put on with the bands on because a lot of people make these kind of mistakes you know they might start underloading and they might use uh, di two different setups where the slackness of the band is affected at the bottom and then it's too tight at the top this can affect the average load and this these are the few things that we're going to be covering in these slides and a few practical uh, examples to make sure that you get a good understanding of when we use accommodating resistance, why we use it, and how best to apply that in the gym. Now, we just mentioned in a few slides ago uh, the importance of making sure that you get the right band set up. And to make sure that you get the correct band set up, I've uh, put down these blocks and the weighing scales in the middle to make sure that we're getting that range of around about 20 to 25 uh, kilos increased load at the very top of the movement. The reason why is because we don't want to be underloaded at the bottom, so the average load ends up being quite quite low and we're not hitting the target percentage one minute max that we're after. So we've set up the dumbbells one metre apart from each other. We're using the purple bands, which are use it, we're using just the top layer of the band. And basically, basically we've got the uh, weighing scales in the middle, I'm just going to step on. So that's 92 kilos. Going to lift up the bar. Obviously, I'm making sure we're measuring this out when the bar's lighter because I'm standing on the scales and my technique isn't that good. Step it up and it's 167 kilos at the top. So that's 25 kilos increased load as we get towards the top of the movement. So we've got 50 kilos on the bar, the band is adding an extra 25 kilos at the top. So that's a perfect setup. So the dumbbells are one meter apart, using the purple 20 kilo uh, purple bands, just using the one layer of them and uh, making sure that uh, you've got the right amount of weight on the bar. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you an example of how to do this exercise actually at load. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to do a trap bar deadlift with accommodating resistance. Okay, so right on the bar there, 85% of my one max, so my one minute max is sitting around about 160 at the minute. Uh, so we've got 100 kilos. So the bar's 30. We've got two 20s and the five kilos there. And then we've got the bands on, which should uh, make the load, total load at the top, around about 136 kilos. Now, there's not much that different from a normal trap bar deadlift that you've got to think of. The only thing is, is to make sure that you're accelerating all the way through that movement. Make sure your chest is nice and high at the bottom, driving up, extending, but making sure you're nice and solid at the top. Remember, it's getting harder as we go up. A lot of people just hit there and let the bands kind of drag the, drag the shoulders down and then come back down really quickly. You need to make sure that you're nice and solid, core tense, glutes tense at the top, shoulders pinned back, slowly come down, uh, rest, reset, repeat. Make sure that you're driving into each, uh, each exercise, each uh, repetition, okay? I would use uh, velocity targets on this as well, just to make sure that they are getting that speed and that acceleration into the movement. 
Okay, so this next exercise is a back squat uh, with the accommodating resistance. Now, we'd normally do this either off um, doing it off the box, like an Anderson squat, or we could do it a box squat variation as well. I'll explain some of the reasons why we do that after I've done the demonstration. I'm psyching myself up, ready to go. It's been a while since I've squatted. Um, my one met max is sitting around about 140 kilos at the minute. Uh, with the band set up like this, um, it's going to be sitting around about 110, so 80% of my one met max. Let's start off with the setup. So we have two dumbbells here. We loop it round and then we pop it onto the bar. We're sitting around about halfway on the fulcrum, not too close, not to the very end. The further away from the end it is, the harder it will be. So you want to make sure that you're putting it around heavy weights because obviously you don't want them to move as you're lifting heavy loads. You do have these SWAT racks that have um, like these um, kind of anchors here. All you need to do there is just anchor them around both loops, okay? So we've made our little makeshift ones here with the dumbbells. Key points to these exercise, as you can see, there's a lot of tension at the top. It's unlike the trap bar deadlift where we're setting up and we're underloaded at the bottom, we're actually overloaded at the top and then bands are dragging you down. So you need to make sure you take a deep breath in, make sure you you tense in your core. When you come down, it's going to be, you, basically the bands are dragging you down so it becomes a lot faster eccentric movement. Now we've explained in our previous workshops and presentations about boxers not having great eccentric utilization. So you need to make sure that this eccentric portion is controlled as we go down. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit faster and we can have some good benefits from that, but you don't want it to be too fast else you won't get out of that kind of that sticking point at the bottom. This is the reason why we use box squats sometimes. So we will do the banded, very, uh, sorry, the accommodated resistance with, um, with the box squats because we actually got like a, a little bit of support. We don't have to rely on that kind of that bounce out at the bottom. Also, we use Anderson squats because we're just focusing on that concentric force, how much force we can produce in a very short amount of time. We're not being reliant on that kind of that dip out of the bottom, okay? So we're, we're starting from a quarter squat, half squat position and driving up and there's enough tension on the band so you can accelerate through the movement. So with this, like I said, it does have a little bit high eccentric demand you shouldn't get you too sore, but you still have to approach it with caution. So I won't do too much volume on this. So I'll do around about three reps and then three to five sets, around about 80 to 85% one rep max. Now I'm going to show you some speed strength exercises using accommodating resistance. Now because these exercises need to be fast and explosive, we only use a smaller band for this. The first exercise that I'm going to show you is a kettlebell swing with the bands. So all you're going to do is grab the band, loop it under, so then the band's nice and solid around the kettlebell. Then you're going to stand with your feet hip width apart, feet on the band, heels on the floor, then you're going to stand upright, start in a little bit of squat position, then you're going to extend through. Okay, so the important thing is here is to make sure that your core and your glutes are switched on when you fire through into that extension. Because there's a lot of tension going through the band, a lot of kettlebell, well, on most kettlebell swings, a lot of people will go loose on here, okay? So it's important to engage your core and your glutes here on the band because obviously that band is going to drag you back down. You've got to try and control them eccentrics as effectively as possible. When you come down into that kettlebell swing, make sure you dip your hips back, but keep your chest up at the same time. Too many go too hinged, 
it looks almost like a deadlift, your lower back will start getting involved, especially when we're working on them high speed movements, okay? When we're extending, squeezing glutes, core nice and braced, without hyperextending our lower back. Okay, next exercise I'm gonna show you is a landmine squat to press with the band. You're gonna wrap the band around the fulcrum of the bar, and then you're just gonna loop it round like it's a little bit like a figure of eight. You're gonna then make sure that you're spreading your feet across so then there's tightness on the band. Lean slightly into the bar. Have your hands on top of the fulcrum of the bar, hands together. You can have it close to your chin. Okay, the important things on this. It's gonna feel like the band is pulling you down, so you need to make sure that you're controlling that eccentric, but also make sure that you're driving up straight away. So when you come down, you don't wanna be holding it at the bottom, you want to make use of that kind of band pulling you down to then reflex back into the movement, produce a lot of concentric force. Also, you wanna drive through that sticking point and make sure that it's all one movement. You don't want to be squatting, holding, and then pressing. You want to make that flow. So you, like I just said, tra transferring that force from your foot all the way through to your fist, just like you do in boxing. Now, when you're at the top, you want to make sure that you're leaning into it, but keeping your heels on the floor, and making sure that you're not leaving them hips behind. You're making sure that them glutes are switched on, squeezing, Brace your core, and it's and we're we're really pushing into the bar. Even though it's getting harder as we go up, we want to try and accelerate through that movement and try and make that bar rattle at the top. It's a great exercise to use during a uh, speed strength phase, especially with like athletes that might not be able to jump too well. You know, we've got a lot of kind of forceful and fast and explosive athletes that just can't get seem to like get the hang of jumping. This exercise is great to, because you don't have to jump, you don't have to have really good jumping technique, but you can produce a lot of force in a short amount of time. That's exactly what we want going into fight night.